friend of mine, Russell, been here to the BK, and he's uh, kindly uh, consented to give me a hand. Uh, please you know, just quickly show us a little bit of APRS equipment. Thanks, Adrian. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank the, uh, the President of the Chairman for the invitation to be accepted tonight. And I would like to apologise. I went, being living in Gosford, I went to the top of the hill where NBN used to be many years ago. And uh, many years ago, which I believe it was up on top of the hill up at uh, Lakes Road, and I parked here. And, 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 that was Brian. That was Brian. Well, there you go. Yes, the original building. Right, yeah. OK, well, I do apologize. Yeah. Uh, a bit of background with me. Uh, 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 I was licensed in 1976, along with my wife. Uh, they, of course, I'm three to NYL, and we'll see that uh, shortly. Um, I've had a, 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 a license uh, since that time. I started with a novice license, progressed through, and now have an advanced license. And my wife has uh, a um, uh, being extended license, whatever it may be now for, uh, um, anyhow, that's beside the point. Um, tonight what we'd like to do is that Adrian has a presentation, and his presentation uh, is uh, on the screen, but I'd just like to talk about generally about APRS. APRS uh, is the system that was de uh, developed probably 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, all the information will be there. It's a reporting system that also allows data to be transmitted. You must have a second, you must have the intermediate license. Oh, what's the second record? Uh, call that? The, 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 oh, sorry, must have a standard license to be able to transmit uh, a, a packet and, uh, or an advanced license. Um, at the end of the day, um, it's, a lot of people think it's all about transmitting location. And sure, that's fair to say that that's what it's all about. Uh, uh, as far as maybe I'm concerned, but data is the, the main thing. Now, about uh, five or six years ago, uh, I ran into Michael, who's up there, and g'day Michael, I haven't seen you for quite a while, said he had, and uh, it's good to see you again. I ran into Michael at the, uh, uh, down at Westlakes, and he was talking about running around with APRS, and I thought, I'm a bit interested in that. Uh, at the time, my wife was travelling a lot of distances uh, late at night, and I thought, well, it might be something that we can look at. So it's gone on from there. Presently, what happens is there are two iGate systems, or two systems that gate to the internet. How it works is very, very simple. You have a transmitter in your, in your vehicle which works on VHF. The transmitter takes signals from a GPS from the, uh, from the satellite. That signal is then, uh, in layman's terms, taken to data into the transceiver. The transceiver then transmits the signal out. Uh, the information that it can, is also from the, uh, from the satellite but also can be from the local uh, area of your motor vehicle. That signal is then transmitted out uh, a simplex to a, uh, a repeater. The repeater then transmits it on, transmits it on, and eventually it goes to an eye gate. And an eye gate is a system where the signal is taken from the air and taken on into a computer and taken to ground. At the moment, there are, there are two eye gates in the area here. Michael runs one uh, on the southern end of the coast down here, and the one that I'm running is, uh, is down at, uh, at Wyong. Um, the system, if you drive around here, and we'll see it shortly here, if you drive around here, the signal that's transmitted uh, can go from here up into um, uh, RTZ, down to RAG, and then continue on to Sydney and be I gave it in Sydney. Uh, during the course of the weekend, both Michael and I took it uh, some strange reason, we're both out there for a short time and the signals down here are still being transmitted because basically RTZ sits up there and you can see it, it's like two metres, well it is two metres, it's the same sort of, it's the same sort of thing. Um, most of this, there's two ways that you can do it, you can have uh, a TNC in your, in your motor vehicle and combine it with a transceiver, a, a VHF uh, transceiver, or you can have a standalone system that you buy the, buy, the, buy the unit and place in your car. Now I've got to say that you can also, it's also run on HF on, uh, on 10 meg, 10.147.6. Um, that's run at 300 board and the VHF is run at 400 board. And uh, the, the HF driving around here on 10 megs, uh, you can basically throw a signal into Adelaide, into Brisbane, into Sydney on a very, very regular basis. Uh, I've actually, actually thrown signals into Europe. All they do is go into the into the system and then they migrate 
into the internet. And once it goes onto the internet, you can bring up a, uh, you can bring up programs that allow you to show where the vehicle is actually tracking the whole thing. Um, around here, most of the fellows are running as a tracking device, just as a, a, a means of interest. There are a lot of people that actually, uh, I know with the Weissen group, uh, the group along with Weissen, uh, we, can, we can use and have used the transmit data when there's something going on like all the and so on, most sort of things. The cost of getting into it, um, this is a, a standard, this, this is the very, very basic two meter antenna, a transceiver, uh, a, a transmitter, and a GPS receiver. On the roof of that, on the roof of that, and away we go from here. What we've got in here is a uh, is a uh, transmitter. Basically, the signal is detected through the GPS and taken into the system into here. It's taken into, uh, it's decoded, and then uh, goes to an exciter stage. The exciter stage is probably 300, 500 milliwatts. Then goes into a PA section. That PA section runs it up to about 8 or 10 watts what you want to do, the power's up to you. You only need 10 watts. And then it goes up into the antenna and away you go. Now, I went to Melbourne the other day, I threw it in the car, and uh, it wasn't a mess like that, but at the end of the day, within three minutes of getting off the plane, there it was. The cost of that, around about $200. Pretty expensive. You can build them yourself. The first TNC that uh, I had was built by Michael. And thank you, Michael. It's still going, would you believe? That's probably a long time ago. A bit of expert craftsmanship there. Um, and what it is is a separate TNC. And what we do is uh, take uh, the signal from the TNC um, into the transceiver, into any two-meter transceiver, and, and, and simply impose the signal the way you go from there. There are other ways that you can run with it. This is what we call the ASU uh, VX8G. Uh, this transceiver here which is a multi-mode, uh, well it's a dual mode transceiver, two meters and um, 70 centimeters. What it has in here, it has a TNC built into it and also a GPS receiver which is on the top here which enables it to do everything that that does except what I've got in my pocket. And I can walk around town and basically that's enough to hear to excite into a signal on top of the hill here and to take it to the deep and take it to ground from there into the uh, eye gate. So these are uh, pretty popular. Limited in your car because you're obviously surrounded by everything in the car. Affects the GPS and affects this also. But um, for a couple of hundred dollars, well, for quite a few hundred dollars, you can buy one of these things. It's like every other two meter transceiver. Or, you know, three or four hundred dollars will probably buy one of those. No, I won't tell them they carry anything like that. At home, uh, I run a simple Camtronics, this gadget here is probably worth about 50 bucks and anyone that's been around for any more than 30 years will know what it is because that's probably how old it is. It's a straight TNC, uh, it runs 1200 board, I run it in KISS mode and I run a program called UIView into it and basically what happens is that the signal comes down from the, uh, in my place the signal comes in from a, a mobile station, it goes into this uh, gadget here basically into the transceiver and from, I'll try the other way around, into the transceiver then into the TNC and the TNC decodes and takes the digital signal onto the internet through a program called UIU. That runs, uh, as I said, you buy this in second hand here and that's all you need to run an eye gate system around here unless you want to give them the technical title. So the other one that I've got here tonight I'm just going to show you very quickly. Uh, this is exactly the same sort of thing, it's probably a little bit older, probably worth about 50 bucks at the most at the moment. This one here runs 1200 board plus 300 board. In other words, it runs HF and VHF. And what this will do is you can run both HF and VHF into it simultaneously and run it straight into your eye gate and run that to ground. Once it runs to ground, it goes into the internet. Anyone here can download the program that will allow you to see what's going on anywhere in the world. Adrian's going to uh, uh, talk to us about that in a moment. Pretty simple uh, sort of thing. The thing that I like about it is that uh, when my wife leaves work and she drives down the road and she decides to go to Green Hills, I can say to her, you've arrived at Green Hills, I then go from APRS to the Commonwealth Bank and I can see how much she spent. She gets back in the car again and I can see where she's going. Uh, it doesn't work like that, but it can. Uh, it's quite simply very, very accurate. You've got an accuracy. You've got an accuracy of uh, 
Right, this is BK2 and my elder's my wife. And because she's nice, my elder because she's a lady, I suppose. She's had, had, a, had, a, had a license for quite a while. I can't see where she is. Uh, yes, she's just about home at the moment. This is my house up here somewhere. I just can't see it. But uh, there, there's my, you just see my house is there. And what you can see here, she's doing 54 kilometres an hour, which is pretty good for a 50 zone. Um, she's uh, 35 metres above the ground. She's got a call sign there. Now, what we do in amateur radio to identify an APRS signal, we put what we call an SSID on the side, in other words, a number. And this number here uh, tells us on a predetermined code what sort of vehicle it is and what's, ha what's happening with it. Now, this one here is a nine. A nine is a general motor vehicle that you drive around town in. 10 is on, on, uh, B, on uh, uh, VHF. If it's got a 10 behind it, uh, 10 means that, uh, I'm going to get my numbers right here. If it's got 15 behind it, 15 is HF. Uh, if it's got a 1, 2, 3, or 4, or 5, it means it's basically a land station that's either digi or what it's doing is um, it's, it's going into a, uh, it's going into a, a, a home station. This fellow's here sitting up the back, Jeff, is that you? Where are you? Sorry, I'm going to go, is that you? It's funny. That's, 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 that's him. Uh, what this one here is generated, I say, by a telephone. Did you just do that? Yeah. Okay. The other thing, and Michael, I'm, I'm, just, I'm not watching here, but uh, uh, incidentally, on there, also, we just go back to where we were, not only do you generate a, uh, you generate a position, but you'll see, you go back on the meter, uh, there's also, on the map, there is uh, an icon that tells you what you, what you can pick. Now, you might have one of ten, one of a hundred that you pick. If you have a look at the map, because of some strange reason, my vehicle has actually got a boat on it. Now, how that happened, I don't know, but I suspect Michael might have done it. What happens here is if you have a look over here, you'll see up on the corner here is a star. This is Newcastle for those people that can't see it up the back. But basically that's Newcastle here and this area up here, the 3K2UD, which everyone knows Steve. Up the back of his place over here is another one that's got vk 2 triple N. Uh, that's Gary Johnson and Gary's sitting down, down over there. Gary's running what we call a digipeter. Now a digipeter is a station that's run from home and all it does is it takes any signal that's running around out there, throws it into his place and throws it out. But it's all on simplex. It's all on simplex. Okay. So it's, uh, it's, uh, that's how that is. Now anyone that's driving within range of Gary's place, might be 20 or 30 kilometres, all of a sudden, instead of going up onto RTZ, he may go to Gary, and Gary will then digi him up onto RTZ. At the moment, uh, Michael uh, has uh, his eye gate, which takes it to the internet, has been turned off for a couple of days, and I'm, I'm basically, it's, it's turned on again. Uh, uh, I've been, I've been uh, uh, getting everyone, and at the moment if you drive around Tari today, there's truck, people driving around Tari and they're being gated at my place. In other words, and people driving around Sydney are being gated at my place. From Tari, the signal goes up to a transceiver, uh, to, a tr uh, to a repeater, it's then simplex repeated, in other words, goes up holes and then shoots on and goes to the next one from Tari. Uh, they go to a re repeater of Cabbage Tree, from Cabbage Tree it goes to RTZ, from RTZ it comes back into my place, and all I've got is a receive antenna that sits there, takes a signal and throws it straight to the internet, and then people can see. So it's really interesting that um, people that are 300, 200 kilometres away, maybe to Tari, I don't know how far it is, uh, are actually coming back through us down here. Um, Michael ran uh, the, uh, he's, Michael's been running, he's one of the oldest established people in APRS, and uh, I'll acknowledge that because if it wasn't for Michael wouldn't be here. Um, uh, Michael's uh, system is running from, uh, I'm not sure where it's running from Michael, but it's somewhere in Newcastle, we'll say that, and uh, that system's been running good. If there's a breakdown, Michael and I share it. Uh, nothing uncommon for me to get 36,000 hits in a month. Not uncommon. Michael and I both provide the internet service at, 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 at no cost. Uh, we provide our equipment and we let it run simply because my computer is running in here, so it doesn't make a difference to me for it to run. What I'd encourage you to do, fellas, if you've got a license or a, 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 a standard license or a full license, have a look at APRS, uh, VK2UWP, Warren Payne. 
uh, Warren's got another meeting tonight, otherwise he would be. There's an RTZ there, as you can see here, um, and there's bits and pieces you'll see popping up all over the place here at the moment. Um, a lot of fun. Uh, when there's an emergency on, what can happen is that Michael and I can talk to each other with data streams, uh, which, is, which is really good. Um, what happens is that if you're driving down the road, your transmitter will be going diddly did, diddly did, diddly did. And that's uh, the signal, sort of the, the digital signal that comes out of it. So what we do is we put a tone on it so that anyone else coming the other way, if they've got the tone on it, I don't have to hear that noise all the time, but all of a sudden with the tones, if you understand how tones work, I can actually hear them coming and then we can talk simplex to each other on the channel on 145175. We can talk simplex to each other and then when we pass by, we can just leave it and let it go the way it is. Mainly all about data transfer. Um, mainly uh, also about location of where things are happening and, and uh, an identification of amateur radio people. Uh, today there was, the traffic was probably at least half a dozen stations that were stations travelling through. vk 2 jp was driving around today and he ended up at Tamworth, he come past my place. I can see what he's doing driving down the road and you can identify. Um, in a nutshell, it's pretty simple. It doesn't cost you much to listen. All you have to do to listen is to go on 145175, take out the audio to your computer, to your sound card, pick up on UIView or APR, or you can go to APRS.fi, which will be come up here in a moment, and you can see what's going here. The only problem with it is, if I'm talking to somebody or doing data, everyone's there. Okay? Um, if you wish to, uh, build the transceivers yourself, and Adrian will probably talk about that in a moment. He's built quite a few of them, and there's quite a few different uh, ones that are around. Some of the bigger names is, is a company called Bi uh, Bionics from in America. Uh, I'm pretty happy to have their equipment. Yesu, Yesu, uh, Icon and Yesu uh, are involved. Now, D Star, also D Star can run the system on APRS also. I think we've got a camera covered without taking all your fun away. Uh, I do apologise sincerely for being late. As I said, I went to Prime. Yeah. <laughs> I went to Prime, and I thought, this is not a real big group. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, I'll hand over to Adrian. If you've got any questions, I'm not happy to answer, but look, I look around here, and I know half the people here, and uh, I, there's a few people that know more about it than me, so I'll be careful what I say. Thanks, so, Adrian. Yeah. Thank you, Russell. Okay, let's sort of... Google is your best friend. There's plenty of uh, information there. Um, APRS.net.au is the Australian website. Um, they have a lot of good information. A few links. Now, my XYL would probably say uh, APRS. It's a bunch of videos watching each other drive around saying the same stupid thing. Look at me. APRS was developed by Bob Beninga, call sign WB4APR, and somewhere around the late 80s. Bob is a senior research engineer for the United States Naval Academy, and he still maintains, maintains website www.aprs.org. Uh, I'll 
obviously the, uh, the acronym was devised from this call sign. Did anyone go to the Guam Field Day this year? Okay. That's Guam on a normal day. That's the field day. This year. Just a little bit of track. Okay, what information can you get from APRS? You get the position, you get weather, you get messages like SMS, similar sort of thing, uh, other tactical information, local information, and there's many other uses as well. A variety of frequencies used all around the world. Uh, as Russell's already said, 145.175 megahertz is the Australian. Uh, the International Space Station is 145.825 and various other frequencies around the world. What's an APRS device? Well, Russell's given us a pretty good uh, rundown. Radios, various uh, sorts there, Kenwood, Gaysu, it's a hand plug there. DC, I'm actually running an APRS station right here. Mm. And I'll demonstrate that a little bit later. Mobile phones. Anyone got an iPhone or an Android phone? I've got an APRS station on my phone. Uh, Seen 
a screen of one, a UI view, as Russell mentioned, is another one. Um, I believe most of the APRS packages for your mobile phones do have a facility to see a map as well. Quick list of uh, software and hardware that's available. A UI view, or Stair, that's a Linux version. Uh, Mob, you'd be familiar with that one. Is that again? A Stair. Oh, the X. Yeah, yeah, Stair. Yeah. Uh, APRS.SICD, which is the one I use on the PC here. Uh, hardware, Tiny Track, Kenwoods. More information, I'll, I'll provide those to uh, anyone who wants it. Now, Peter Lovell, AE5PL. I actually emailed him. Uh, he did a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, some time ago. I emailed him about uh, putting this one together, and he's more than happy if anyone wants to email him uh, for more information or help, he's more than happy to uh, lend assistance. Very nice fellow. And of course, saprs.net.au, like I said, is the Australian APRS website, and I've got a lot of information as well. Okay, moving on to the computer program. Now, this one here, APRS.SI, sorry, APRS ISCE slash 32. If anyone's got a Windows mobile phone running versions 3, 4, 5, and 6, um, this package will work on, the, on those phones. Um, a bloke by the name of Lee K J4 ERJ, probably his call sign right, is actually currently developing this software as we speak. This week, well, I run the developer version on my like, netbook here, and I've had to update the software because he's done development release, which is the beta version. Uh, twice this week, so I've uh, run three different versions this week myself. Um, the program itself is an APRS client. You can see uh, where everyone's at, what they're doing. It can be an eye gate, configure it that way. Uh, Digipeter uh, message has the, also has the facility to send an email. Um, Bulletins. It's just information. You know, earlier this week, I haven't been home since Sunday night. Um, I set up my station at home on the K2 BAC to be in the, the heading select here tonight. And uh, I hope it comes up, but uh, if not, we've done something at home. Um, who is look up? Find out uh, who the station is. So that you can decide to send them a message, say hi Bob, please make the plans on Australia or whatever. Uh, the maps for this software come from openstreetmaps.org, which is open access to that paper on. Now this software, as you're moving around, if you're operating in a mobile situation like I do, I drive a semi-trailer five days a week in Sydney. And every now and again, I'll see a, a little yellow circle that expands in size and then disappears. That's just downloading a more up-to-date version into the PC. So, like I did with um, your mobile phone or mobile data, this is what I'm saying, you need to watch your data usage. Um, GNAs, the orders, the street lookup. Get a street address for where the station is. Uh, it's got ge ge anyone heard of geocaching? Yeah, no. You can use geocaching locations on this and you drive to the actual location. I've only just got into it and I find it very interesting. Um, it uses the KISS TNC support and the NMEA GPS support. Uh, AGWPE. It also supports the camera D710. There's just a couple of things that uh, were on the to-do list back in June of this year. I don't know whether it's changed. I haven't checked the link's website. 
uh, but he's made quite a few different changes to the software since then. Um, you can now, with the development version, I don't know about the public release version at this point, um, you can actually, I'm using a Bluetooth GPS receiver. Don't worry about the wire, that's just power. That's a Bluetooth GPS receiver, a Bluetooth dongle, and I can actually select that receiver in the menu system. I don't have to set up a comp port and work it in that way. Um, okay, now, what I'll do before the demonstration, are there any questions? No questions? Is there much information besides your position being sent out all the time? Yes. There's all sorts of information. There are weather stations. If someone wants to set up a weather station at home, you can begin the air pressure, wind speed, wind direction, temperature, rainfall, and I actually had one of those until the uh, census sort of um, had a, uh, a meeting of concrete on the ground. <laughs> Not happy. Not happy. But yeah, weather stations, and I'll show you Cessna. Okay. Just a minute. So, uh, any other questions? No questions? Okay, we'll move on to uh, the program. Right, like I said, I'm running the development version, so the public release may not be the same, and it's, it's very easy if you wanted to run a development version. Keep in mind it is beta, the development version. Um, so uh, there could be issues with it from time to time. Ross has decided he wants to uh, fire up his iPhone. Okay, now, I said look up address, find out where it is. Let's wait for the server to come back. Now that's not terribly accurate for what we, we want, but it says he's in Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia, Oceanic, Earth. You want to know where Earth is? Right. And the who is look up? Right, and there's his name and address, and that's only because he's got his address in QRZ. Okay, it doesn't actually look at the ACMA database. Um, it's only information that the actual uh, amateur has put in there. Right, now I, I mentioned to you about weather. Let's just pull Cessna in the centre. Right, there's that yellow circle I told you about. Right, now currently, 17 degrees out of Cessna. The wind is at 15 kilometres an hour, gusting from the east to about 20 degrees. And in the last 24 hours, they've had no rain. The barometric pressure is 1014.9 millibars. Humidity is at 81%. That's the other thing I forgot to mention with weather stations. And Cessna weather station is 44.7 kilometres from us as the crow flies. It's just other data. It's a grid square location. That's what it is. Now, Russell, you still got your iPhone on? Yeah. I would be lucky to do it. Receive this message. <laughs> read it out, please. Notice up the top right hand corner of the screen, it's got no message and it's in yellow. This computer is still waiting for Russ's phone to say, yep, I've received it. Please don't tell Russ I'll stop his name on. Yeah, I had it on. No, I just, I'll just reset it. Yes. 
different to uh, Tuesday the end because I'm, I'm sure that he was presented by the first time. To the city end? So you want to ask us? I can't say how I was. Yeah. Well, there you go. He's got that over there.
uh, objects on them. Do you know what they all stand for and how the filter works exactly? Okay, my key, I'm not 100% sure. That's something I need to find out myself. Yeah, because what I want to do is set up just so I receive stations, like yep. local stations. Uh, my key, I think, is yes. like a press for four bit of the data, I understand all the data you can read straight off, but under my key, uh, the data is compressed, so you can't read what's in the packet. Okay, yep, that, that, that makes sense. Um, object, well, that, I'll show you uh, this object that uh, Paul was beaconing. No? That, that's uh, Clacton on C, that's where Paul G0 HWC lives. And he is anyone know where London is? Over in the UK. Right? Yeah, if he was at home, I would send him a text message so I can do my book Russell. And if he's around, he'd send one back. I was actually chatting to him before I was waiting to get unloaded the other day. I found out that he wasn't far away. So I his map location come up. <laughs> Don't know this place, so I zoomed back out. And he's and he's uh, a little little distance from home. Right. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, I don't know whether you can see the United States here. Barbados is just about there. Now, what we're going to do is clear that, that filter I've got in there. Are you running voice alert in the trunk? No. 
Yeah. Right. Against your FT8900. I used to run an RF APRS system. I never run this system. I'm actually toying with the idea of putting an RF system into the car to watch the XYR. You can use voice to the button of the time, so. Yeah. Voice is a little more legal than typing on a computer while driving. When you buy that one. Okay, um, now I mentioned to you about selecting the, um, the GPS. When I updated uh, about three weeks ago, I think it was, um, the program actually asked me about my GPS device. Now, I've already told it it's a Bluetooth device, and that's just the, uh, the model number, GT-750F, that I'm actually using. That's this one. I got that off eBay, and I can't remember how much I paid for it. But uh, there's many, just Bluetooth GPS, if you wanted to get one off eBay, if you wanted to run a system like this. Um, now the icon that I'm running, funnily enough, track, is a track. And I could quite easily change that to a laptop, a computer, a house. Um, How many icons are there, Bob? Oh, you know? Oh, There's over a hundred, I think. There's over a hundred. Running men? Running men? Yeah. Um, and then there's just a whole lot of different configurations I can set up uh, for that program. Any questions at this point? Why that map was just growling all the time. I will actually be back to just very, very low. So that's growling in the last five minutes. You two kids in the back corner, keep always be quiet. I will we'll put you on detention. Okay, so uh, have we got any converts for open areas? We want to give it a go. No? Well, have a think about it. Um, Russell and I are relatively easily contacted. If you want to uh, do something about it, I'm sure Michael wouldn't mind giving a hand to anyone who wants to get into APRS. How about that? It's, uh, it's something that I never thought that I would actually do. Um, I was actually talking to a bloke called Adam Phil, ZL2TZE. Um, about 18 months ago, and he sort of gave me a nudge, and I was sort of gone into it uh, with all both feet. And I'm sure Phil, yeah. Phil actually runs a tier server over in New Zealand, so that's part of the Highgate system. And, uh, yeah. Alright guys, thank you for letting me come along and uh, Demonstrate. Um, Ross and I will be around for a little while. If you've got any questions, want to have a closer look at some stuff? I hope I can just say a word. It's really interesting because uh, I see one of these in a brand new box sitting here. Uh, I see I just met Jim up the back who uh, I've been watching, tracking him for the last three years. He says hello on Jim. And that's how it works with amateur radio. Uh, I'm, I'm even unsure who the president is here, so, but I do apologise. But thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Thanks for having us, guys. I will hope to see you on the end of the show. Thank you, Adrian. It's like a presentation now. You can get up and talk and show things, but bells, bells, when you get up and show it like that, it gets you in. I don't know whether I'll ever go down. I like, I like your weather idea. That's, uh, you know, interested in that. I reckon I can spend the money 
and save the wife here. That's yours. You can watch it. She likes to know what's going on. She doesn't. The local stations put the weather on. She's not convinced that's going to be the weather for the day. But if she was getting her own forecast, she wouldn't like it. Also, 